everybody. Okay, so we're now live. Sorry about that little delay, but you know, it's a new setting and I didn't know what to expect as far as the setup. So here we are. So impressed with you, Miss Tiffany, what you do. It looks gorgeous in here. Thank what you. we didn't show you was a, there's an upstairs level as well. And then there's another upstairs level. I mean, it looks hot. It looks really good. It's Thank really you. Good. Just got it. Got it all set up. It's nice. How long have you been here now? Since July 1st. July 1st. Yes. Wow. Since July wow. 1st. Wow. Okay, guys, we're just going to jump right in. Now, you remember the last time we spoke with Mrs. Thomas, it was, I don't know, three weeks? Yeah, it was the end of June. End of June. End of June. Here we are. So, we talked about the clinical depression that we're seeing in, in, in trends right now with teenagers, young people. So Ms. Thomas is talking about that. So I'm giving you guys a few minutes to catch up. If you have any questions or, or comments about that, some of you actually approached me privately and said that you're dealing with that right now with your 16-year-old, your 14-year-old. And I was like, wow. And some couldn't explain it. It was just, I don't know, it was a matter of the teenager was checking out yes. in the sense of they were no longer interested. Yes. And, and the sad thing is, it's my students. Um, the sad thing is, some of the students were, you know, trying, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden now they're not trying. Mm -hmm. uh, they're getting poor grades. They're mm -hmm. doing summer school this summer, and it, it, nothing seems to phase them. Yes, yes, absolutely. It seems as if you are reading a textbook on some of the things that we see yeah. as conditions, um, some of the symptoms that have been identified, particularly as it relates to young people who are exhibiting early warning signs of depression. You mentioned school. Yeah. That is actually one of the indicators um, when young people were previously functioning well in school and all yeah. of a sudden they're having a difficult time in school, they're struggling academically. I don't mean... Um, but you know, even in some cases, Tiff, some of these students are just not even trying yes, anymore. absolutely. Um, one of the so, other wow. things that is connected to teenagers and depression is that they sometimes tend to be overly sensitive to criticism. Mm -hmm. So if you are having a hard time academically and the feedback is you're not doing well or your grades have dropped and th these sorts of things, that only starts to reinforce some of these negative feelings that you're already having. Okay, hold that thought because I, I have a comment for that one right there real okay. quick. But I want to acknowledge those who are live with us. Hi, Charlene O'Neill. Nice to see you. Jennifer, I see you caught us this time. You missed us <laughs> last time. Woo! Rosita, what's happening? Donna, nice to see you. Yashen, am I pronouncing that right, Tiff? Yay Shen. Yay Shen, okay. And Shuri. Or Shuri. Um, I, I'm sorry. Right there. Hi, good to see you, Miss Buchanan. <laughs> we'll go with your last name. We'll go with your last okay. name, yeah. Whoa. Okay, Tiffany, so you're saying sometimes they, you know, they may feel the pressure. Yes. But how do you let them know, quite frankly, mm -hmm. we'll have this, you know, frank discussion, like, look, your grades are low, like you're not performing, but you're right. going to graduate next year. I can't sugarcoat that. No, you absolutely cannot sugarcoat it, but it's the choice of words that you use. Ah, choice of words again. And okay. the tone of voice, you know, tone of voice says more than what we say. Yeah. You know, we've always heard it is not what you say, it's how you say. Mm -hmm. So I could say to you, I love you, you know, or I could say, I love you. Right. They communicate two very different things. They communicate a different level of intensity. Mm -hmm. So we as adults, it's a it's a definite learning curve in how we learn to give feedback in yeah. situations when we're already feeling frustrated with our children. Because <sighs> let's just be real, it is very frustrating. Yeah, and these moms are frustrated. Especially when you know what your child's capable of. And so if you're looking at it purely from the perspective of, you're not doing your work mm -hmm. and you're not performing academically, not considering that there may be something else going there, going on there then you are going to, you're going to respond from a place of what's wrong with you? You know how to do this. Right. That's, you know, right. all of those sorts of things instead of saying, well, hold on. Cause what they really need in that moment is somebody to validate and acknowledge that something has changed because they sometimes don't even have the language to attach to what it is they're going through. I guess I'm like from my client saying something's changed. This child's been doing this all this time. I've had enough. Yes. So Tiff, how do we, something with single moms raising some sons and yes. they have some challenges. Yes. And the characteristics, so how do we deal with that? The characteristics that show up in our young men are very different from how they show up in our young ladies. Yes. yes. And just by makeup, girls tend to be more vocal and guys tend to keep things, you know, a little yeah. bit more in, but yeah. that's not good, bad or indifferent. That's just, they're, they're different, right? And so one of the things that pe um, young people need the most is to feel safe. Okay. To feel safe in their space of vulnerability. 
Hey, Chris. Hey, dog. Yes, very so true. I already feel as if I'm a failure. Mm. I, as the person who's feeling these feelings, have absolutely no idea what's going on. It's as if it's come on out of the blue. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I'm the only person who's going through this. So how right. do I explain this to anybody? Okay, let me let me jump in mm -hmm. as far as my parents. Like, mm -hmm. no, my mom's like, Angela, but you know what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So I know of a particular case. My mom who's like, look, I mean, she is a hands-on mom. Mm -hmm. She is a phenomenal mom. Mm -hmm. She is there, whether it's a football, whether it's finding him a summer internship or mm -hmm a break um, internship like these are visioning parents yes. are doing their part yes and they're just like look the father's not involved right like what more can i do right so if he's having these type of social emotional yeah. um changes yes. very distinct changes that you know this is not my son right you know there's this analogy that i use where it's like it's almost as if you want to grab your hand into their mouth and pull the real thing out because you know they're in there but that disappeared and it's not teenage hormones it's not bugging it's not a phase it's something very significant has happened you can't put your wow. finger on it and just as frustrated as we as adults feel imagine how they feel so should i say to my parents i, I know you guys want to listen should it be maybe see tiff well i'm not on her to endorse myself i'm certainly not on her to ask you guys to come see me but i am on her to say there is help available and there are, Tip, there are Tip is being very <laughs> modest. I'm just look. The reason why I have owners is to promote her business. Let's just be real. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do appreciate that. But the work that I, that I do is certainly a labor of love. Yes. Right. And so I'm not on her for any self edifying reasons. We but, know this. We know this. But I mean, um, you know, if you've seen this going on for a significant amount of time and you're right. concerned enough, then by all means, absolutely, you do need to reach out for help. Yeah. Because the longer it goes on, the more pre the more um pervasive pervasive mm -hmm. it will become. Right. And not only that, but the more um collateral consequences these young people will experience. Because wow, wow. now, okay, you may not graduate on time if you're purged. Now, what does that do for you from an emotional perspective? Exactly. What does that do from you for you socially? There may be employment opportunities that you'll miss out on. All sorts of all the consequences the ripple effect exactly yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Exactly. wow wow so let's just stop here because i some new face from the last time so mrs thomas please again explain you know the name of your company what you do again your credentials all that good stuff okay great <laughs> So, I jumped in my question. Those of you who are new to this platform or new to me, my name is Tiffany Thomas. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, a bachelor's degree in psychiatric rehabilitation, and a master's degree in clinical social work. And as if I am not busy enough, I am a <laughs> doctoral candidate studying organizational leadership with a particular wow. focus on ethics. I'm really Woo. focused on ethical leadership and how we as leaders are leaving a mark. Like, yeah. why is our legacy gonna be? What are people gonna remember? Oh my before? gosh! During the I have to look good for a minute. During the election last year, I kept saying to some of the you know potential MPs or senators, whatever, I kept saying, "What what is your, what are you doing with your level of influence?" Right. Which right. to me really translates to what are you doing as far as your legacy? Right. I guess in retrospect, thinking of my father, what he has done, mm -hmm. his legacy is still. Is still being enforced. It's long lasting, you yeah. know, and people are looking at that. And so myself, when I did work rallies or whatever the case was, it was like, okay, it's time to do something more meaningful. Yes. And that's what motivated me. Yes. Hence why I do these live chats because I help my clients who, you know, if they're growing so much. Now I have 200 students in my program, 115 parents and awesome. growing. Awesome. And so it's just like to stay connected again to help those real talks, those conversations that they may not be comfortable with, but they need the help. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, you know, where mm -hmm. can I go just to get that? So to have someone like yourself to come on, explain the resources you have available. Yes, we are promoting your business. <laughs> and yes, we are letting the folks know here, here is a viable option for you because, you know, things have just have just taken off. And yes. it's, it's so yes. interesting because I've gone from no taking and starting strategies. Now I'm getting into counseling and, you know, resources and, and having all this, you know, there's a lot going on. A conference yeah. coming up, a lot going on. Awesome. Yes. So guys, you know, we have another hot topic, but I'm holding off on that one until, you know, if you have any other questions or comments, particularly about the clinical depression amongst teens, please feel free to post your questions. We will be here to nine o'clock. You know time flies. Yes. And you also <laughs> know I have a tendency to go off topic. 
So if you want to get your points in about this particular one, I'm holding off, I'm holding off. So I want to just jump on something yeah, that yeah, you yeah, said sure. that really resonated with me. You said, you know, when you were doing the rallies and stuff yeah. with the lead up to the election, you wanted to do something more meaningful. Yes. And that's what led me to actually opening my own business. I, I was previously that last time. Um, yeah. a civil servant. Mm -hmm. And I used to work at the Department of Court Services. Absolutely loved it. I loved working with the population, the offending population. Yes. I loved the work I was doing. When I left there, I was the senior probation officer of the probation team. Loved mm -hmm. it, loved it, loved it. It was the best, one of the best seven years of my life. Wow. Like I absolutely loved it. Um, but for me, it got to a place where I realized, are we being impactful? Are we really making a significant change? And I'll say young man, because that was predominantly the clientele we had. Mm -hmm. We did have young women on probation, but for the most part, a large, popu a large segment of the population we had were young men. Wow. I'm like, what are we doing? We're missing the mark somewhere. Especially that you were saying before, you were seeing it's very yes, generational. Absolutely. So the moment for me when I was like, okay, something's got to give was the moment when I had a father as well as a son on probation at the same time. Wow. And I was like, is something going on? Wow, like that wow. that really struck me. I, I'm not, I was not to a place where I was far removed from what was going on. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is what we do. I wasn't just turning my wheels. That really struck me. Of course. And I'm saying like this father is on probation with his son, not for the same offense, like not for an offense that they committed together, it's just Silicon. by happenstance that they're on probation at the same time. So I said, you know, I started to really search about like, okay, how can I be more impactful? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about me, but it was just like, how can I give my gifts to the community in a way that would be more Meaningful. significant? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I decided, well, you know what? Let me look at education. And so I left, I, love, I loved that job, <laughs> as you can tell, right? So when I left, I went to um, education and I was working as a school counselor, another job that I really enjoyed, but I realized that the impact was very um, limited, narrow. Yeah, so I, I may impact kind of Angela, but I wouldn't necessarily impact Angela, Donna, Tiffany, Sarah, Susie. I wouldn't impact all those children because it was very minute in the level of influence. And can and I so, also say, can I also, I'm just asking a question, mm -hmm. but... I'm looking at the bigger picture, yes, right? Yes. And you're saying you were in the court system and you saw a father and a son, yes. you know, basically going through the same situation. Yes. So as a counselor, you're probably thinking, I want to get to the root of the situation right. and wasn't probably allowed to do that. Well, no, I was allowed to okay. do that. The, the, the drive was twofold. Mm. It was, what's the root and how do we change the system? Yes. That was what it was. And so in in the role of a school counselor, that's not my remit. You know what I mean? I'm not the chief commissioner of education. Like, that's not my remit. I'm not an educator. So I realized, okay, but I, I had to go through that process to see, okay, where are the gaps yes. in where we can't come into contact with our young people? Mm. Because as a probation officer, I used to say, how could this guy get to 20 and he can't read? Like, why wasn't he red flagged? Those sorts of things. And it's not to say he wasn't <laughs> real flagged, but it's like, how did he get her? Tiffany, I'm shaking my head <laughs> because I'm, I'll just share the story. I had a case. I've actually had three mm -hmm. in my workshops. Mm -hmm. And I've had, yeah, and they were boys. Yeah. And they were mm -hmm. M2, yeah. M1, and the other one was S2. Mm -hmm. So I had observations. One of them hadn't done any Spanish yet. And I'm like, you're S2. The M two year old uh, wasn't reading wow. fluently, wow. and the M one was, you know, acting out because mm -hmm. he could not read. Yes, he could not read. And you will see those behavioral problems yeah. when children are struggling academically. Yeah, and when I had the family come in to observe, everyone was in denial. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miss Young, he needs to. I'm like, no, 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 no. Not about focusing mm -hmm. one like that. He is illiterate. Right. That's and I'm glad totally that you is. said that because. Yeah. Sometimes we're quick to label our young children with certain titles when it's not necessarily the end or be all, and it mm -hmm. could be something underlying, like illiteracy. It could be dyslexia going undiagnosed. Yeah, it could be all sorts it. of things, mm -hmm. but it takes a parent or a concerned adults who are around to be able to pick up on those things and curry enough to go the extra mile instead of just settling with yes. is not focused. Yes. You know? Um, and it's a lot of work, parents, um, to be a vigilant parent, to be someone that is going to 
look beyond the surface as far as what your child's presenting and their behavior and what they're saying. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work. And I'm finding in my workshops and just dealing with parents, mm -hmm. some of them don't want to do the work. They want to happen by osmosis. I'm like, it's not going to happen. Right. You're not going to have a boss child right. doing amazing and, and, and incredible things right. if you're not stepping in and putting in the time. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a full-time job. It really is. Um, so <laughs> after much dis deliberation and just soul searching and just thinking like, okay, I have these gifts. Yes. How can my community benefit from my gifts? Because I really do think if you're the member of a society or a member of a community, you have a responsibility to leave it better than how you found it. Oh, my dad used to always say, number have a heart for the community. Have like, a heart for, yeah. That's fundamentally Absolutely. one of my beliefs. Absolutely, you know? yes. Just, what can I leave behind that left my community in a better place? Yeah. Because I care about my community. I'm Bermudian. I'm born here. You know, like, this is my home. And like you say, I've actually heard different friends, a bit more of it, but when they say that dash, from the time you were born, yeah. live the dash. Live the dash. I like that. Live the dash. What is your dash? Live the dash. Live the dash. Yeah. So I finally decided, you know what? This is not my purpose. Mm -hmm. Like sitting here in this office, I remember the day as if it was yesterday. I was sitting in my office at the school that I worked at. And I was like, Tiffany, be honest with yourself. This is not your purpose. And this is not what you were created to do. You know it's more. I was literally doing the work with my eyes closed. Like, because it was, you know what I mean? So I'm like, this isn't my purpose. And I finally said to myself, the longer I sit here in this seat that is not designed for me, I'm preventing somebody else who was designed to sit here wow. from walking in their purpose. Wow. So I left. I had to make the decision to leave. Because when it came to me like that, I was like, somebody else really can be impactful here because they were called to do this. They were designed to do this. Okay, so when you left, there was no plan B. There was a plan B. Okay. So the whole time I was working, um, you know, in different organizations, mm -hmm. I was seeing clients on the side. Now people were approaching me, hey, you know, I want you, I want to work with you in private. I want you to see my child, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily have the time to devote to it wholeheartedly. There was one home school who would contract with me to see their students on an as needed basis. Okay. And so that was a really cool opportunity, right? And so I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And I saw the demand, but I had full-time employment. Okay. Right. And so finally, when I made the decision to leave, I was like, you know, me. The demand is there. I just need to put myself in a place to receive it because I was not in the right place at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. So I laughed and I said, you know, I'm going to do individual family therapy, children through adult, because my background allows me to do that. I wow. have the experience. Yes. You know, I've worked in other jurisdictions. I haven't just worked in Bermuda. Yeah. Yeah. And so I made sure to be diverse in my experiences because I knew when I came home, I wanted to make a difference. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to just come home and pull a paycheck and do a nine to five and just that's it. Yes. I wanted to legitimately make a difference. Okay, Tiff, I'm getting ready to transition. I love it because that's where I was good. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to transition. So you guys haven't come here and asked any questions. So they must be, <laughs> they must be ready for the transition too. Yeah. I think so. I love it. Okay, so let me just put the, the backdrop and mm -hmm. Tiff, you know, get ready. Okay, guys, so you've been looking in the in the press. I guess some of us, honestly, I didn't really, I didn't catch on to what was happening. Yes. I, did, I wouldn't yes. catch on. Even when we met with Tiffany, when we had her on the show uh, in three June, weeks ago, yeah. still wasn't, you know, sure about what was going on until <laughs> <laughs> the past week or so. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so. You guys know that, some of you don't know, Tiffany is a litigation guardian. Yes. So I'm going to have Tiffany just explain just that one part, what a litigation guardian is, and then we'll go into the other part of our discussion. Okay. So the, a litigation guardian is an independent social worker who is court appointed yes. to represent a child, yes. to bring the child's voice to proceedings that involve the child. Yes. That's okay. the easiest way I could That's explain the easiest it for way. right now. Yeah. And I want to make sure that your viewers get get it. I don't want to move too fast. I apologize in advance. This is a subject that I am extremely passionate about. It exudes from me, I know. And I can't I, I say I'm sorry, but I'm really not sorry because I'm really passionate about it. Yeah. And it's, I see I, I see the benefits and yeah. I see the consequences of it not happening yes absolutely absolutely guys i got my phone so 
If you've been watching the press, there has been a lot of talk about children's rights, yes. hence why the discussion, the topic for tonight is protecting, protecting our children's rights. Yes. Now, in our discussion with Ms. Thomas about the three weeks ago, we were discussing, you know, her role as litigation guardian, and she was sharing with us that, you know, in the past four years of her doing this and being appointed by the courts, she had not been compensated. Well, yes. Sarah Roberts jumped on that. So <laughs> I'm going to put that pocket, she, I'm going to hang that pocket right there. I remember that, that call. Michael was outraged. Yes. <laughs> and Ms. Mays Girl, Nikki the Shields, and Eddie Woolridge. Yes. Oh, I'm yes. sad. So I'm going to hang that one on one topic. Okay, that's one part of it. Now, earlier in the year, I think it was April, where there were about several charities mm -hmm. that basically um, took a case. Yes. And they launched a case basically mm -hmm. saying that the, you know the children should have some some form of representation uh, in in every in majority of cases because litigation guardians are basically appointed specifically or or in specific one. cases. In so that right. case actually was arguing. So the legislation that I operate on as yes. a litigation guardian is the Children Act, nineteen ninety eight. Yes. Specifically Section 35. Yes. Now, Bermuda's Children Act 1998 is a direct replica of the UK Act. Who that thought? I gotta give you the back to before Miss Miss Thomas gives her, you know, her part of it. So I give you all the speed. So that was happening in basically I think it was in April. Yes. The puny judge Hamlin. 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 Sorry. Hamlin had said in that June. In June, right, in June that Yes, children should have representation, mm -hmm. but he didn't feel that um, a payment was basically a requirement, was basically no, a discretion. That's not what he said. Okay, so, what he said. so this is when people need to be informed, Yes, because we already know that media gives us what they can print, right? right? And so there was a full judgment. Mm -hmm. So what was printed was not the full judgment. Uh, okay. It okay. was excerpts of the judgment. Okay. And so what was printed was, Children have the right to representation, right? If the government can afford it, right? Who that's that thought? What, yes. That's what. That's what was printed, right? So who but, that thought? Who okay. that thought? The part two, but in the Children's Act, correct me if I'm wrong, though, mm -hmm. there is no legislation in there that says well, the that the court has to pay. It doesn't say the court has to pay, right? But there are uh, guidelines that govern legislation. Okay. So then, Bermuda adopted the Children's Act from the UK. Mm -hmm. We adopted just the Act. Okay. So it was as if we adopted the skeleton. Right. We so didn't that, adopt. Hold that thought right okay. there. Hold that thought there. So if you saw in the article I posted yesterday from Bird News, where Minister Michael Weeks had said that they were looking at it, it was part of their throne speech back mm -hmm. in September, that they were going to try to put some, I guess, some order around this whole mm -hmm. litigation guardian thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's being looked at. So all this is happening, folks. <laughs> So now, Mrs. Thomas, if you saw also in the paper, was it Friday? It was in Saturday's paper, but Saturday's I actually paper. released it to the press on the 18th of July. Okay. So I suspect that may have had something to do with Minister Weeks' response. response. Of course it did. Of course it did. Of course it did. So basically what Ms. Thomas did, based on the ruling from um, the judge and Hellman, she basically sent the email to the premier and expressed herself. We'll talk about that as well. And that is very interesting because now it's looking at a case... For me, as someone Lehman coming in, it's, mm -hmm. it's making me question, okay, well, how does this all fit into the bigger picture when you mm -hmm. have these different departments? You have social workers, mm -hmm. you have the Department of Child and Family mm -hmm. Services, mm -hmm. and it's just, okay, so how does how does all these players fit into this okay. bigger picture? So That's what I'm hoping that you one can... One of the things yeah. that Justin, Justice Hellman ruled, which was not printed, oh. but is in the ruling, and it's a public ruling, is that children have the right to representation yes and if we continue to breach that right by not giving them representation we are breaching their human right and we are uh infringing upon their welfare okay he so what said in very specific terms yes. and this is a direct quote okay that's fine. he said if we continue to not allocate funds to this we're only frustrating the current system okay then here then so here's, that's what his that was part right. of his ruling so it wasn't just well what they get it if we can afford it it was no, they this definitely is not right. It. Yeah, they but he didn't. It. And one of the arguments that was presented in that case was make a declaration that government needs to fund it. But he wasn't so certain that the court had the autonomy to say, Premier Bart, you need to allocate X amount of dollars to this initiative. You know what I mean? And so that's 
part of some of his ruling and i certainly can't speak in depth about it because there are some more things going on mm, mm. um but the legislation is very clear yes. there are children who if you fall into this certain category you are entitled to it period no questions asked okay if but in that category but hold on tippy look mm -hmm. in that category though i'm trying to understand then what is the role of the social worker, right. like all these other departments, what is the role? And then we're bringing I love in it. I a love litigation it. guard. Like, like I how do we it. understand I love all it. these different players? So the litigation guardian solely represents the, ch the child. That's it. Mm. The social worker for the Department of Child and Family Services yes. is a civil servant. They're yes. a representative of the government. Ah. So they're limited in what they can say and do. Okay. The litigation guardian comes in and says, listen, this child needs X, Y, Z. I'm not bound by bureaucracy. I'm not bound by budgetary constraints. Okay. I'm simply saying this is what Johnny needs in mm -hmm. order to be successful. Okay, okay. That's where the difference lies. So but for but example, let me give you a lie. Hold on, but don't social workers also say what the children require? I to? love it, I love it. Thank you, I'm so, asked, I'm asked the question. I've had, an, I've, had, I've had an incident, you know, I have so many stories. Yeah. So we had, I had a client and the recommendation was for a certain type of treatment, right? And the family was opposed to this certain type of treatment. They were very adamant, we do not want that. So who recommended the treatment? I'm getting there. Okay. We had a meeting with the family. Okay. Myself as the litigation guardian, the social worker from the Department of Child and Family Services, and the family. Mm -hmm. The family says, no, we're standing on ground. We do not want that. Okay. So the social worker says, okay, fine. It's off the table. I won't bring it up again. A week later, we go into court. The recommendation was it's for that there. treatment. This social worker couldn't even look the family in the eyes. And in that instance, I knew, I knew she doesn't have the level of autonomy that I do because she gave them her word that we won't have this conversation anymore. But obviously she works, you know, there are, there are strategic so someone higher than her. So she's a push it through. Not, I'm not saying they pushed it through, but maybe when she went back, they were like, no, you know, we don't agree. You really do need to go ahead and push this. And that's unfortunate. Mm. Keep mm. in mind, this type of treatment was voluntary, but you're looking for the court to make a court order. Historically, that would have happened. What? Listen, yeah. historically, that would have happened. And there would have been nobody else in that room to say, hold on a minute, this child doesn't want that. This child isn't suitable for that. That's not what this child needs. This child needs X, Y, Z, not A, B, C. Mm. So historically, what would have happened is that social workers would have gone into the courtroom and presented evidence by way of their court reports. That's evidence, right? Right. And based on their court reports, they'll make a recommendation. Historically, it was them and the judge. Nothing was challenged. The lawyers? The family, no lawyers. So families didn't know they had the right to these. And so orders were being made that had a really significant impact on our young people. Wow. If I don't know what I don't know, I don't know what you know. Well, of course not. That's and so I can't say, show. I can't say, well, hold on, my child, I don't know how, and keep in mind. Ain't not in the room. The parents, they can be in the room. Sometimes they come, they, sometimes they don't, but you don't know your rights. And keep in mind that, and I'm saying this, you know, in, generic, in general yeah, terms, yeah. but for the most part, the families that come into contact with the court systems who are, um, who are, are qualified to receive this service, they've been involved with the system for generations. So they generally have an inherent distrust. They already have an expectation of what this process is gonna look like. There's something Hence inherently why they're wrong. I show up. There's something inherently mm -hmm. wrong okay. with information being placed before the court and it's accepted without another perspective. So these decisions are made and children's voices aren't heard. So for example, you may want to make an order that says that I live with so and so, mm. but I don't want to live there because I know what happens when I live there. The child perspective. But your mandate is I have to be reunified. Okay. And the parent may have done everything that they need to do to check the boxes to be reunif reunified with the child, but the child may say, I remember the last time I was there. The last time I was there, it lasted this amount of time and then it got unstable. I'm not ready to go back yet. I don't mind, wow. minute, but who's having that conversation on the child's behalf to say, oh, well, maybe we're moving a little fast. Let's look at some other alternatives. Can we potentially consider this? Can we con potentially consider that? So am I naive in thinking that the social worker is not having that discussion? No, I'm not suggesting that they're not. 
but when they go to court, they're not the voice of the child. Here's the part that I want people to understand. Oh. When I come to court representing a child, my sole focus is that child. Right. If I came to court, say I worked for, and I have to call an organization that, say I work for organization ABC. Yeah. That was a government organization. I'm not talking about family services, somebody other than ABC. Right, right. So say I work for organization ABC, and I was appointed to be this child's litigation guardian, mm -hmm. but I work for organization ABC. Mm -hmm. Automatically, by default, I'm limited in what I can say. Because if I say anything that's contrary to, to ABC's agenda, so who, where does my focus lie? Where does my loyalty lie? And who's my true client? Is it ABC? Or is it the child that I'm assigned to appoint? I'm a represent. And that is where it's so crucial that the person who's appointed as a litigation guardian be independent. I'm a clinician by trade. Right. The amount of children who I represent as a litigation guardian, who I could have in individual therapy, endless. But I can't because it's a conflict. Because this is not a therapeutic relationship in the sense that you're coming to me for ongoing counseling. Ah, okay. That's how clear the guidelines are regarding how you operate as a litigation guardian. Okay. So in Minister Week's article yesterday, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. was saying that the um, the draft changes mm -hmm. will include imp implementing a panel. A council. A council yes. that basically be monitoring and managing yes. the oversee of litigation guards. My question is, mm -hmm. are there other litigation guardians outside of yourself? Are there others who do this as well or you're just? Um, as far as I knew until recently, I was the only one. Mm -hmm. It's been rumored that there are other, but I, I can't say for certain. Okay. But in 2014, it was understood that I was the first appointment. Okay. Now keep in mind, the legislation changed in 1998. Right. And it took us to 2014 to respect the child's rights. Right. Now, the council, that's an interesting uh, interesting point that you brought up. Yeah, because I'm like, because yeah, I've spoken with me. Minister Weeks about the council, and I've said to him, great, that's fantastic, but here are some things that you need to consider from a continuity perspective and mm. from a clinical ethical perspective. Mm -hmm. Who's on the council? Yeah. Because in order to be a litigation guardian, you have to be a master's level social worker. So if the people on the council are not master's level social workers, what kind of guidance are they giving to you? The litigation guardians you would not understand the nuances mm. of my field mm. counseling and social work are two different things mm. that's why they have two different degrees right that's the first thing mm. the second thing i said was because they have to be uh masters level social workers they have to be independent of already existing organizations why if i'm sitting on the council and i'm employed for child and family services Where's my focus? Well, yeah, where's the objectivity? Where's the objectivity? Yeah, where's yeah, the yeah. independence, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I said was, with regards to the council, who is the council accountable to? If it's a minister, is that minister got a background in social work? Because how can you think and say, council, you're operating ethically? How can the council oh filter gosh. down and say you're operating ethically? Wow. If you don't have the intricate, the, the intricate knowledge that it takes to operate as a social worker. So if Bermuda is, from what I understand, from any, what I read in the articles, mm -hmm. it appears that we are basically um, looking to the UK for you know guides and a, I guess, a formula to operate. Yes. So in the UK, what do they have in place as far as a council? So the UK, they have an organization called CAFCAS. Yes, I C A F C A S S. Mm -hmm. CAFCAS is an independent standalone organization mm -hmm. that is contracted to provide litigation guardian services. Okay. So remember I was saying to you how in Bermuda, we adopted the legislation yeah. and that was the skeleton. With legislation comes rules. Mm. We didn't adopt the rules. So we don't have the, we don't have the skin to put on our skeleton. I just want to jump in. That just seems to be the pattern in Bermuda. We tend to do, <laughs> it tends to be laws that are implemented and, and they're always half. Like they're not fully thought out yeah. and, and made sure they're implemented the right. I mean, we look, I just bring it up as an example. I'm not putting a judgment, but I look at the example pathway to status. You know, we had the strikes <laughs> in 2016, and yet the real issues still have not been addressed. Mm. Just saying. And so now to see that this was implemented back in 1998 as far as Children's Act, mm -hmm. and here we are now in 2018, 
and we're just now considering possibly implementing a council and then questions are being raised about who's going to basically manage the council, who will be on the council, right. who will be directing and making sure that their decisions are actually ethical and that good stuff. It's like we're going full circle. So <laughs> you want to hear something very interesting? Of course. I'm Our ready. legislation was changed in 1998. Right. Based on the UK Children Act of 1989. That act, they've been having this, like this is this is something that the UK has been doing for years. Wow. So all of that to say, so the CAF CAS organization is an independent organization that's funded by the government. Yeah. Because the UK government recognized this is enshrined in our legislation. We have an obligation to make sure that we follow through on legislation that we put in place. Yes. But we can't, as the government, provide the service because it's a conflict. Right. So based on that and based on conversations that I had been having with multiple um, members of this sitting government, members in the past, mm -hmm. senior civil service, That's I, had, funny, very interesting. We, <laughs> I had been encouraged to say, listen, you've been providing this service for the past four years, primarily exclusively, right? There was a gentleman here um, who was doing it, but he is not a clinician. He's American and the American system is different. Yes. And as much that, that and even the Canadian. System. Yes, yes. Yes. And so he had the heart for it, but he recognized that he, it was different. And, and also didn't this PLP government also hire an overseas person recently? Yeah. For litigation guardian case. Yeah. So it was interesting. I'm sorry. I just have to say this part. It's where it bothers me because I'm, I'm just saying this to say all of this. We keep telling our children, get trained, get qualified. We're looking to, you know, support our own and, and hire our own. And then you hear something like that. It's just like, wait a minute, what's what really is going on? Because if you've been in practice for four years. Unpaid. Unpaid. Unwavering, unwaveringly without fail. <laughs> So just to give you an can, idea, yeah, hold on, but we can't. We can only assume, and we all know what's happened. You know, their travels was taken care of, their accommodations was taken care right. of. I'm sure their meal and everything else that transportation right. was taken care of. And here we are, we have a local right. who is here and has not been compensated. And that is I, what I think. Um, that's I think that's Minister Weeks did say. You know, yes, we had uh, a UK litigation body and her to consult on a family member. And I thought it was completely admirable that this person would think enough of our children to come here on their own dime, pay oh, for their own ticket. Dime? Well, he said they were unpaid. So unpaid means unpaid. Okay. So I think that person needs to be applauded mm -hmm. for not bringing an expense to the people of this country, especially considering that there was a Bermuda in here. Yes, Tanisha, that's my point. I, I mean, that's not an aspect to this. How can a person be hired for a temporary stopover? Yes, stopover. I love that. To have conduct of a role that requires such in-depth focus of the child. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that the litigate the Thanks, Donna. The um legislation, and I'm so glad that was raised, the legislation gives the litigation guardian access to the director of Department of Child and Family Services records. Yes, I understand that. Access to the records, and I can take copies mm -hmm. and present it to the court as evidence. Oh. That is significant. Wow. There have been times when I have presented things to the court that they otherwise would not have known because it had not been shared. What? That's a problem. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to, I'm certainly not saying, this is not, Anti DCFS night. No, no, I get that. that. I get this it. is pro children night. This is about our community. My issue is, you're looking from one perspective. I'm looking from the child's perspective. But but, but who wants to me? If if social workers are, you know, that's part of their remit is to represent the children and look at the case. I'm assuming holistically. Mm -hmm. Then why are some things being selective? I can't, I can't, I can't speak answer to that. Just, yeah, just, I don't work for that department. I'm just bringing up the and right I just want to continue to reinforce, I'm not here to blast anybody. I'm simply here to just educate our people. Yeah. Because like you, Angela, before I started doing this work, I knew nothing about it. And then I found out about it because I never said that. So I had stepped away and then I got a call. Right. And this person literally said everything on my resume. I need somebody for a master's in social work. Somebody who's familiar with the court, can work with families, can write court reports. And I'm saying, have you seen my resume? And he's like, listen, I need somebody to be a litigation guardian. Right. And in my naivete, 
I'm like, guardian? I'm got a child of my own. I don't want anybody else's child. Because I thought, like, guardian in the sense of, can you take this child home for a temporary basis? So, hold on. So, back at that point, that really wasn't being discussed. It was Bermuda. not being discussed oh. at all. And so, as I've started to work in this role, I mean, the it's, imp- it's, it's, it's amazing. But what really strike, strikes me the most is, I would have never known this if I wasn't doing it. So, how many parents out there who <laughs> qualify for this service? You know, because there are parents who were just doing our thing, we're going day in and day out with our children, but then there are parents who this directly affects mm-hmm. and they have no clue. Yeah, so I know they one of can't my even clients, educate, they can't even advocate for their children because they don't know what to ask for. Yeah, I know one of my clients after the show we had three weeks ago said they were going through a divorce and mm-hmm. they didn't realize that this was actually a service. Yes. No one had yeah. even told them yeah. and they're and you know, they're going through a very contentious yes. divorce. Yes. And so I do represent children in those contentious divorces because we talk about um what about the child's voice in the divorce? Okay, hold on one second. Now question, teacher. The social worker works with the family as a unit and you're focused on the child, correct? That's what I thought, Tanisha. Um, in in the easiest sense of the word, yes. Okay. So my focus is the child. Obviously, I have some level of contact with the family, but my focus is the child. It's how do we bring this child's voice to proceedings where the decision is about the child. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can't imagine somebody making decisions about my life and I never had an opportunity to say, and I'm not saying that children should be walking around making all sorts of decisions for that. That, That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is fundamentally, we have a right to respect our rights and we have a right to let them feel validated in the process. So we've completely disempowered our children and we're wondering why they're walking around angry, feeling Mm -hmm. disenfranchised, Mm -hmm. feeling like they're not connected to the community, feeling like people don't care about them. There are some very significant court orders that are made. Sometimes families aren't consulted. Sometimes children aren't consulted. Sometimes uh-huh. you're not even told this is what we're considering. And I'm not saying good, better, indifferent. It just is. Okay, so hold on. Let's go back. I want to go back. You said you did speak to Minister Weeks, mm-hmm. um, particularly about this council. So I would like to know what was his response when you basically raised those two key questions as right. far as, you know, who will be selected to be on the on the council? Mm-hmm. Their qualifications. That's mm-hmm. the third question. Mm-hmm. And then basically, as far as who will be um, overseeing right. the council, right? And if it is under the minister's remit, then how is that? And look that upon was with their background. It's right. an accountant. But right. not only that, I was saying, you know, ministerial positions are political appointments. Yeah. So the government of the day could change. The premier or the day could change, or the premier could decide to shuffle his cabinet. Yeah. What does that do for continuity? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. does that do for who says because the government of the day may change and say, well, yeah, we don't think that's important, or we want to appoint different people to the council? Well, what happened to the children? Yeah, yeah. And so, like I was saying, so based on some of that feedback, mm-hmm. um, with multiple people that I was having, not just Minister Weeks, yeah. I was encouraged to submit a proposal to government. And they were saying, listen, submit a proposal to formalize what it is you've been doing all this time. Because I was saying to them, listen, I've been doing it. I have some data. I would love to partner with Kafkas so that we can start to interface because they're, they're doing it. I don't believe in reinventing yeah, the wheel. I was say, but, well, yeah. but, and I say this very firmly, I do believe there's a significance in taking into consideration our culture. Oh yeah. We cannot embrace a model that was developed somewhere else and expected to work in Bermuda because there are some very unique nuances. Hence the about, middle schools. The there middle are some schools. very I'm unique nuances about our culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was asked to put together a proposal which basically said, listen, we'll provide this service that will give it continuity, ensure that Tiffany, litigation guardian Tiffany and litigation guardian Angela are doing the same thing. Yes. Not Angela's up in Somerset doing what she wants to do, Tiffany's in town doing what she wants to do, and then the court gets to report. You're like, okay, well, we like Angela's reports, but Tiffany, my, my God, on it, because there's no level of structure. Right. So right. these these things were what was shared in my conversations. And so, mm-hmm. like I said, I was encouraged to submit a proposal. So Me what and my so, innocence. No, 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 but, but you had that question. So what did Minister Weeks say when you raised these questions? I he he said these are very, he was like, yeah, these, these are good. Yes, you, you make some very good points. You okay. make some very valid points. So he definitely took it under consideration. Okay. Um, so I, again, I went ahead and did the proposal, mm. not me and my innocence. I just write the proposal and it lands on somebody's DAX. And the first thing they say is, well, where's the number? So I'm like, well, what number? I'm used to court. So I'm thinking like, 
well, contract number 36 of 2018. They were saying compensation. The money number. Yeah. He's like, how much is this going to cost? So I told him, because I had done budgets, I had looked at the budget, previous budget books to look at, you know, departments that provide human services, what their budgets look like, the staff and levels on me. I did my research, mm -hmm. you know, and based on the level of intensity, because one of your young, your um, readers, I'm saying readers, one of your you viewers are. asked about the work. So then I do a fall review. I'm not even exaggerating, Angela. I can do one fall review mm -hmm. and it can take like four hours. That's not reading the forms, you know. That's simply making the copies that I need to, t to make. I then have to come back to my office and go through each piece of documentation I have on this child, mm. analyze the information that's before me, mm. and come to some conclusion on what these words are telling me about this child and their family. Wow. wow. So it's labor intensive. It is time consuming. I'm not complaining. I love it. Yeah. But it's a specialized art. It's not something but that somebody also, can just... But is it also taking you from what you also do in your business? Listen, it's as if you're reading my mind right now. Okay. It's yes, taking me away. Question. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, you know, people need to understand. Yes, I have a business, right? Mm -hmm. But I have devoted so much of my last four years to being a litigation guardian and not getting paid that obviously it goes without saying that there are some consequences to that. There are some direct financial consequences to that. Absolutely. I was in court last week for one case mm. that lasted three and a half hours wow. but i have a standing private client private clients pay right of course i missed that appointment so for i'm sitting case. in court for three and a half hours not getting not paid, paid and missed an appointment of a client who's a private client and that happens all the time wow that wow. happens all the time okay so tiffany that let's uh hold if i ask my question zena woolridge asks what does that do for objectivity? I can't remember. We can't remember where that came in. <laughs> so see Ms. Woolridge, come back in and explain like what that question retained because I can't remember right now. I've drawn a blank, but I will ask my other question to you, Tiffany. Okay, so, we're waiting for you to come back. Yes, please, please, Sina, please come back to us. So you emailed the premier. Yeah. In your in your email, you copied in the media. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, what was your intent, mm -hmm. and what is your expected result? In doing that okay you may say what led to the email oh good yeah okay. give us a guess so yeah. i had been having ongoing conversations with multiple um members of this certain government senior civil servants mm. political appointees just multiple conversations as the latter outlines and there have been multiple commitments to settle the outstanding payments yes so i'm like listen i haven't been like i want to know why this did just what can we do to resolve this? Because it's a long-standing issue. I get it. You guys inherited it. But yeah, the government is the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had a commitment that, you know what? We are going to pay. Okay. I had a commitment that... Well, was it verbal? No way. It was in writing. Okay, okay. I don't rest on my laurels. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I had a commitment that, you know, yep, we agree. We, we do need to settle this. We're looking for the funds. Mm. Conversations are on. You know what? We're a labor government. We can't be seen accepting money from a consultant and not paying. Like, that, that's just not something we could do. Yeah. All of that to say, after um, Honorable Justice Hellman's ruling, mm. I received an email from an individual who said, well, yeah, well, in light of the ruling, sorry, it doesn't seem like you have grounds for claiming. Wow. And it seemed to me as if that was the part of the ruling that they were embracing, the money. Well, they were solid to me. It was very strategic, waiting to find out what yes. it was going to be before yes. we before we respond officially yes. again yes. to Miss Thomas. It was strategic, and I definitely can't say all of these stuff because, like I said, there are things coming up. I right? made some assumptions. So human nature as it is. I got the email and, and I decided, you know what? I'm not going to reply to this. I'm not. I'm just going to let it sit here for a minute, and I'm going to see what I have to do next. Right. Meanwhile, simultaneously, um, one member of this sitting government said, "Listen." email um, this individual and request a meeting with the premier. Okay. So I said, okay, fair enough. They said, you know, he needs to hear from you directly. Mm -hmm. So I said, fine. The individual who I was directed to email was on the same email, one of the Chain. recipients okay. on the email where it was said, you know, yeah, well, sorry, it's been great, but we're not going to pay you, which essentially says <laughs> I've been court mandated to provide a service for free. Basically. That if you, if you follow that rationale, that means... That's how I interpret it. Yeah. 
So like meanwhile, like I said, meanwhile, I was having this side email with this person trying to see if I can get a, a meeting with the honorable premier. So I emailed the person and I'm like, listen, just following up, I haven't heard anything. The reply from that person was, you need to speak to this person, the same person who just told me, oh, yeah, sorry, we're not going to pay you. So I said, okay. So I waited about maybe a significant amount of time because I don't believe in being impulsive. I don't believe in just being emotional. Okay. And I drafted the email. And the reason why it was a letter, it was a formal letter. The yes. reason why I sent that letter to the premier was because nobody was talking for the children. For me, nobody can ever assassinate my character and say I got into this for the money. Oh, hold on, though, Tiffany. You had the you had the charities. Yes. That launched that case because mm -hmm. they were. I'm assuming mm -hmm. they too felt that they were speaking on behalf of the children. Right. They were speaking on behalf of the children from the perspective of protect the right to this service. They knew that they couldn't provide the service because, mm -hmm. again, the objectivity. Right. Right? Right. And so there's already a recognition from established human services providers in our community that's like, these children need this. We can't do it because there's a conflict. Right. But they have the right to it. Mm. So all of that to say, and what people don't know is that part of that movement was driven from young people, from children who received my service. Really? These children say it. We're not looking for any financial damages. We just want to make sure nobody else has to go through what we've entered. Wow. Because when I got involved with them, they were older teenagers close to aging out. You age out at 18. Mm -hmm. So there was an altruistic nature to it for these children. Because I'm like, wow, the Human Rights Commission joined. Yeah, the charities joined. Because people legitimately saw. So how did the students initiate that? The young people? Mm. Um, I'm not sure about the intricacies around that. I can't really speak to it, but they were joined as parties, which okay. means like they had an interest in the outcome. Wow, hats off to them. Um, awesome. So what was I saying? What was your question? <laughs> we lost, I lost my train of thought. I was saying to you as far as what was... Oh, the, the ladder. Yes. And so the, ladder. the reason why I sent the ladder was because... You just give the history behind Yes, the ladder. because <laughs> I was saying, hold on. Somebody needs to speak for the children of this country. Yes. Somebody needs to say, hold on, like our children are entitled to this right. And we should not be infringing upon it based on what we finances. Need. Not only that, but based on what we may value. Legislation is not value based. It's black and white. Mm -hmm. You are entitled to acts. Not if I think it's important, you're entitled to acts. No. But you in are this entitled case, to acts. But in this case, the, the, legal, the um, legislation will basically enforce that you get paid because they can t they can continue just send you cases and saying well you know the rule well, is there i don't know about the legalities around that because mm -hmm. i'm not a lawyer right. i don't pretend to be i'm a social worker um but what i will say is that was the heart behind my ladder and i have been trying to get a meeting with the honorable creamer and i have been redirected to somebody who this individual knew was not interested in this service. Right. And I was like, what about our children? That's what making the point. It's like people can just say, well, the ruling say it. Yeah. And throw their yeah. hands up in the air and say, well, the ruling yeah. say it. I firmly believe because I, I'm doing my doctorate, right? And right. so I believe in research. I firmly believe in empirical evidence guiding program impl implementation. Like when are we as a country going to get tired of saying, this is what we're going to do. But we have no evidence to support the implementation mm -hmm. and no evidence to support the ongoing progression of this program mm -hmm. or this initiative. So all of that to say, over the last four years, I've developed, I've, I've kept statistics. That's right. part of being responsible as mm -hmm. a human service provider. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to look at these statistics and analyze some things and say, wow, well, this is interesting. Or this percentage of my clients have a background in or have a family history in mental health. Right. This percentage of my clients have a family history in substance abuse. This percentage of my families, when they aged out, they ended up involved with the criminal justice system. I was going to say, All you can of see these the results. Of the, exactly. Right, right. All of but these then, things, then, are, the numbers don't lie. So, okay. My question again mm -hmm. was basically, mm -hmm. so what is your, what was your end result or desired result mm -hmm. sending in the latter so that the, to the premier? So that the people of this country mm -hmm. can become informed and so that they can speak to their elected members of parliament mm. in their constituency and say, listen, like we must ensure that this happens. So basically to raise awareness. To raise awareness okay. and educate okay. people. Okay. Because this is the thing. I, I've been doing it for four years and I realized 
if I don't start to publicly raise awareness, I'm becoming part of the problem. Yes, you are. And so I was like, okay, enough is enough. I'm had enough of these closed doors meetings. I'm had enough of these email conversations. Mm -hmm. The public just has no clue. Right. So my other question, that's what I was asking you earlier, are there any other litigation guards you say you're not sure? Yeah, right? I can't see for certain. So I was just wondering, I'm just trying to think of a way, I guess, to make your voice even more powerful. Like the same way the charities got together, mm -hmm. they raised concerns, like, is there a group of litigation guardians? I that can't speak to right that. Right now it's just you. Yeah, Looks I can't like really it. speak wow, to that. Wow, wow. Rena, what happened to your question? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you, I know you, she asked you to the come question. <laughs> Because, guys, we have, you know, just under 20 minutes left, looks wow, like, and, you know, wow. my goodness, time has gone. Um, wow, Tim, I just have to sit back and just be like, whoa, yeah. there's a lot of layers to this. It is a lot of layers to it. And if there's one thing that I want your listeners to take away from this mm. is that we owe it to our children to get yes. it right. Yes, it's taken us 20 years to even have the conversation. So we owe it to our children to get it right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You know, it's interesting. I, I mean, it's, it's definitely off topic, but I do see some similarities. The same way how I was on Facebook last summer venting, mm. you know, about what was happening in the system. Teachers were going on strike. You know, there was, it was basically rumors that they may not come back. The school oh, started. Wow. All of that was happening. And I was just like, hey, what can we do, you know, to get involved, to help circumvent that? Because nobody wants to have their child not be a star at school. They're supposed to especially single parents they have children right you know, absolutely who take off or work or whatever and you know i truly believe work rallies definitely force some things to the forefront mm. where the government and the change of came they had to look at some things yeah and we, and we got the attention to the point you know colonel birch had to take basically all of the staff on parks and listen we're gonna put you yes. on you know and helping out yes. and getting the grass cut because all those things. So I see, Tiffany, what you're doing mm. is definitely raising awareness. It's definitely got most of us saying, wow, all this is happening and, and yeah. how, you know, we have to uh, keep our pulse mm. on, on what's happening, particularly yes. with our children and, and who the key players are. So I'm right. hoping that, you know, something comes of this very positive. Right. Me too. And I will say this as well, because it's easy to say, <laughs> well, that screw up, I said. <laughs> um, it's easy to say, well, my child's grown. You're absolutely right. Children always become adults. Right. So what is it we're seeing in some of the adults that could have been stemmed in childhood? One second, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Zena, I see, all I see is what does that do for objectivity? And I can't remember where that part came into. I'm asking for clarity. Where does that fit in with our discussion? So if you could just um, put a little more to that, that'd be great because I'm not sure where that fit in our discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. Even if you may be the mother or father of adult children, it still impacts you because these children grow up. And how are they going to function in our society? What is their quality of life going to be? How are right. they going to contribute to our society? Well, I think it speaks volumes that the children that did raise this concern, they're about to leave the system. Mm -hmm. and, and for them to say they don't want the younger ones coming in mm -hmm. to face what they, you know, what they went through, I think that was that for them recognizing, like, I have to make a change. Right. You know, I have right. to, you know, do something different. That's that's great. Okay, Tanisha says, how does your service as a litigation guardian affect the child's education? <laughs> that is a fireball question. So um the litigation guardian is independent. I'm not a civil servant. Right. So if I have a young person who is entitled to a full time public education and they are being denied that then as the litigation guardian, I have those conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a case recently where we were struggling with that very issue and the social worker was pounding the pavement. I mean, she did an amazing job advocating for this child. Right. And finally, when she realized these people aren't listening to me, you know what she did? She walked into that meeting and she said, I'm not fighting you anymore. I'm not fighting you anymore. Wow. You're gonna have to deal with his litigation guardian. You're gonna have to deal with his lawyer and his litigation guardian. Okay. I am not kidding. Wow. She said that on a Thursday, he started full-time education on a Monday. Wow. That's the power of independence that these children are entitled to. Wow. Because mm. when a litigation guardian is appointed to a child, they're also entitled to a lawyer. Yes. I'm not a lawyer. So I can look at the legislation and say, okay, well, this is what the legislation says about acts. 
my, my perspective is welfare. That's the paramount perspective. What is in the best interest of this child mm -hmm. to protect the welfare? Okay. I then say to the lawyer, this is what they need from a welfare perspective. And the lawyer says, well, this is what we can do to put in place to protect them or to get their needs met, all of these sorts of things. Mm, mm, mm. And so the litigation guardian actually assists with closing the gap that exists in some, in some ways. And there have been long standing frustrations, you know, where people are like, well, we've been talking about this for hours, we haven't been able to do anything. So my question is that tip based on what you just said, how does a parent feel? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just being, I guess, like a battle word, devil's mm -hmm. advocate. If mm -hmm. I'm dealing with the case, if I'm and my child is in this situation, mm -hmm. so I've got my lawyers involved, mm -hmm. the if social workers lawyers, yeah, the lawyers is. involved, right? Mm -hmm. The social workers involved, mm -hmm. and then the court says, bring in a litigation guardian. So what happens in that case if that parent's like, wait a minute, somebody else is involved in this thing? Believe it or not, the parents don't usually have lawyers. Oh. Yeah. So once the litigation guardian got involved mm -hmm. and the legislation gives the appoints a, a lawyer if it's needed, right? Mm -hmm, but the mm -hmm. litigation guardian, absolutely it has to happen. Right. The the parents don't have lawyers. So once the litigation guardian comes up a lawyer, the Department of Child and Family Services now comes up a lawyer. Representatives from the AG's chambers, not private lawyers. The and mom the or dad have doesn't have a lawyer. They may sometimes, but they don't always, right? interesting yeah so <laughs> okay. but there, so you know they may make an application for legal aid or whatever the case may be i'm not really sure because the child is my client right and so i'm very clear on keeping the boundaries clear mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um because i don't want there ever to be any confusion or any inferences or any alle allegations yeah. i can give you guidance but your child is my client right um believe it or not they're relieved okay they're relieved because keep in mind, these are cases that have been involved with the system for an extended amount of time. That's what I'm so saying. So the first thing they say, 90% of them, where you being all this time? Oh, Lord. And then when I start to explain to them my role, and I'm like, you know, the legislation changed in 19... What? Well, my child was born in 2003. So they should have had this? Oh, what? Lord. My child was born in 2014. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. Um, that young, somebody said to inbox her. Yeah, that's your cousin. Masani. I don't have or relation. Facebook. Honey. Oh. <laughs> uh, Masani. I'm the only person on the planet. No, you're not. They're probably like you. Thank dinosaurs. You. <laughs> my met. company has a Facebook page. So yes. if you inbox my company, then yes. we will get it to you. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks, Julie. Very good question. Yeah, I mean, wow. I'm just trying to absorb what you just said. Yeah. Cause, wow, wow, that that that's oof. Exactly, and then we wonder why yeah, we have. Pause. And I say young man because socially that's where we see the issues with our young men. Yeah, but we wonder why we see them walking around angry, not wanting to connect with the the, the community, feeling as if the street is their family. All of these things come from somewhere. They don't just come out overnight. We mm -hmm. wonder why they have mm -hmm. no value mm -hmm. for human life, let alone their end. Mm. I'm going to say something to you, and it's going to sit well with you. It's going to definitely say, hmm. Of course. I'm I, I say this. My little heart can't take all this. I say this very um, often because yes. I want people to make the connection. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that the litigation guardian is the be all and end all. Right. I am suggesting that it closes some of the gaps. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting and as well disheartening mm -hmm. that this legislation was changed in 1998, which predated the height of our social problems with the gun murders that started in 2009. That's a very interesting point you just raised. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's taken us 20 years to even have the conversation. If by nothing else, we owe it to our children to do it right. Because yeah. these are people's yeah. lives. Yeah, yeah. I say all the time, because you know, people say to me, oh my gosh, you're so passionate. I'm not crunching numbers for a living, you know. These are people's lives Absolutely. that I have the honor of interacting with. Absolutely. Every decision I make has an impact. 
Well, so Tiffany, because we got now, if you believe it or not, just under just under ten minutes. <laughs> so, goodness, if all of this, what's next? Before we go, like, what is next? I guess the balls in the government's court at this time. And the premier, if he's if he's watching my show, the premier. Yeah. You know, there are so many young people who go through situations in silence, and their parents as well. The parents do not have or have very little avenue to go and say, I need help. Right. You know, right. I had a, a referral come to me from SCARS. Young person had experienced a horrific incident that no young person should ever have to deal with. Mm -hmm. They were violated in a way that they should not, a young lady should never have to go through that. I'm assuming it's not the sexual. Yes, it was a sexual assault. I'm going to call it what it is right. because... You know, we have these pink elephant elephants in the room that we don't want to talk about. That's why I'm like, what was it? And so the person <laughs> went to Scars, and Scars said, Her, contact Tiffany at Therapy to Consultant Services. And so I said to the person, I said, listen, I'm actually court appointed. So I can't go into court as the voice of your child. But what I can do is provide you with some support. Okay. And so they never knew if the perpetrator was in the community, if he was on bail, when he was going to court, all of these sorts of things. So they could have popped up at the grocery store and seeing this individual. I said, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this. So I started to go to court just so that I could find out, okay, well, today they were there for mention. It's adjourned to this day. Yes, it's still on bail. Very little things. Okay, well, now it's going to be sentencing. Now this is happening. Until the end of the simple things that we may take for granted. And they never have a lawyer, I'm assuming. Listen, well, the child was the victim. So you don't need the lawyer. The lawyer is, who needs the lawyer is the defendant. No, I mean, as far as the parents, they had no one as far as a that's not the, advice yeah, to, to that's guide not the, them through. Mm -hmm. So, wow, wow. simple things as far as maybe we should look at scheduling this trial for a different time because this young lady is getting ready for her exams and she's going to have to give evidence. Oh, my God. Simple things like that, right? And so all of that to say, I never even met this family. I don't need to know you to be able to impact you. And so when I say to you, like, I believe that as being a part of a community, I have a responsibility to leave something impactful. Like, mm -hmm. I challenge everybody to say, like, what am I doing to make Bermuda different? What am I doing to make Bermuda a better place? But, but, but also to it makes you wonder, like, those who may be involved like, in that particular mm -hmm. case of defense lawyer, like, did it not encourage their mind? That's the not that job. It? I know that, but at the same time, I guess I'm being naive, yeah. right? The defense because lawyer's job is to defend our no, client. No, here's my point. Here's my point. Here's my point. This is what I'm saying. The same way you have a sense of sensitivity towards mm -hmm. these cases, I'm just saying those lawyers, whoever are involved, in the case, they should also have a level of sensitivity. Because I'm thinking, why did the defense lawyer at least say, "Well, hey, man, you know, it's it's getting close to exam time. Mm -hmm. Maybe this shouldn't be the right time." To that's all I'm trying to say. It a defense seems, lawyer would not. Would, well, I, I understand that, but at the same time, it's like, where are the ethics? Well, where is the compassion? Be. Where is the, the concern for the other person? Like, we become so immune to all this. Yes. It's all about the business and the big box. My whole thing, like, pump the brakes, people, those of you involved in situations, and just think about the individuals that are involved. They're humans. They are human. That's They're my humans. point. I have a That's saying. Point. I have a saying, um, cause social work, cause social work falls under the human services umbrella. Mm. And so I have a saying that says, when we remove the human from yeah, human sorry. services. Yes, which I know would benefit that case. I get that. I'm, I'm just thinking, a cheek, can someone have a heart? <laughs> when we things. remove human mm. from human services, we're simply just providing a service. But yeah. No different than a gas attendant, no different than a waitress, no different than an accountant, it's just a service. Yeah. And so when I get these re these appointments, it's not just a fraud on my desk, this is a life. It's a life. Yeah, that's 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 all my saying. I, I, I understand, yes, you're, you're probably benefited because you get the strategic edge on the case, mm -hmm. but my whole thing is, gee man, where's your heart? And and look, I hate to I, bust your bubble, I, right? I know. Because I heard you saying, Sure, sure, sure. I learned a long time ago. Sure, it is a distortion of reality. If I live my life based on what should be, I would always be disappointed. But uh, yeah, I would always be disappointed. I still say I'm naive. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I mean, yes, I work in the corporate America. I know how cutthroat things can be. But at the same time, it's like, at what when point do you say enough is enough? Yeah, it's and just, that's where that ladder came. Enough is enough. Our children need that's, that's, to be that's, heard. That's what I'm saying. So for too long, I've been a voice crying out in the wilderness, and I am 
looking forward to people just being more educated, you know, and being more informed about what's going on. I was, you know, I was very yeah. disappointed that what was printed about the ruling was so um, limited. Mm, of course. Because it wasn't the full scope of the ruling. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I understand journalism and, you know, all of that. So I, I don't, I'm not a journalist, but right. I understand that, you know, you just have to write a story. And everyone you know, is looking at the angle of, you know, how it's going to benefit them. Everyone's looking at self right. and how it's going to benefit them. So, right. yeah, yeah. I, I get that. So, yeah. wow. So we have, what, how much time left? Six minutes. That's how I'm blue. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, oh, again, I go back to what I said earlier. I, I really hope that, you know, all of us, like myself, I, I saw those articles in the paper. I didn't really pay any attention until we had our meeting. Yeah. You know, our show per se. And I was like, oh, litigation guardian. Oh, hey, that's not an article. Oh, yeah. oh. And then I just it started piquing my interest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So all that to say to I hope that from this, that, you know, these questions are answered and, and something since the ruling is public, can you post it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would have to get a copy of it. The lawyer who represented the party, so the lawyer who represented the charities and the, right. and the Human Rights Commission has the full ruling. So I would have to get a copy of it. So it's it. not in the public domain somewhere? Well, usually when rulings are made, they're posted on Supreme Court's website, yeah, so but it hasn't been posted yet. I wonder why. So. <laughs> Make some noise, people. <laughs> I wonder why. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, guys? Uh, before I do my commercial break, for Miss Thomas, and again, her business is Therapeutic Consulting Services. Tiffany, explain, you know, where you're located now and how to reach you. So we are currently located at 53 King Street, which is right next door to the fire station. We are in the beige color building. At the roadside, you will see Oxford Learning Center. And our entrance is at the back of the building. There's a little gate, people. It's a little gate. You got to go. It's, it's open yes, right it's there. Open, right? Yeah. So go through the gate and go to the back door. You have the buzz to get in. Yes, because we really, um, what led to the move was the increased need for privacy for our clients. And so we had to be mindful of where we chose the location as far as the proximity to cool it. Yes. And making sure that people felt safe when they came here. It's a beautiful facility. Once you get it all set up, it's very nice. So we can't very wait nice. to welcome some of you here and we look forward to your continued support. And thank you so much for this platform, Angela. I am grateful. Well, I'm honored to have you on. I mean, you open all of our eyes, my goodness. <laughs> okay, have a marshal. All right, Tanisha put side on. Exactly, Tanisha. <laughs> I believe that it's not only a physical need to change things, i.e. laws need to be updated by the big parties changing mindsets. Yeah. Yes, totally agree. Many times parties, departments involved in looking after welfare children do not advertise yes. that a guardian is even an option. Yes. yes. I mean, two of my clients told me this. A mindset of a guardian being a positive thing needs to be embraced. And what steps can the everyday... Hold on. What steps can the everyday person do to help Tiffany with her cause of awareness? You mentioned and you mentioned talking to your local MP. Okay. Anything else? Um, outside of talking to your local MP, I would just say continue to spread the word. Mm. Therapeutic mm. Consulting Services does have a Facebook page. Um, so I would encourage you to jump on there, follow us, and see some of the things that we're doing in our community. You're absolutely right, Ms. Marshall. They don't mention it, which is another concern of mine because the legislation... Um, the legislation that the Children's Act, it speaks to the director's rule, the director of child and family services. And the director's rule is to have oversight of the children's welfare. Yes. There hasn't been a case where a social worker has walked in and said, this child is entitled to a litigation body. Hmm. That's no different than advocating because your child needs treatment or your child needs specialized education. So you're absolutely right, Ms. Marshall. You hit the, heel on, the nail on the head that there is a need for increased um, public awareness. And if you don't mind, Angela, I do need to publicly state and thank. Of course. There are three lawyers who have been working with me pro bono. They have not been paid She as got well. it back. Thank you. Jesus, she got well, it back another way. They're, they're doing it pro bono, but... They, you know, the government knows they, they do need to fund, pay for them as well. And those lawyers are Mr. Saul Dismont of Marshall Dillon Myers. He has a heart for vulnerable populations. Wow. Miss Katie Richards, who is the director at Chantry Legal. 
She is working alongside um, Mark Pettingale, and they have okay. been tremendously generous to this cause. Ms. Richards has extensive, extensive background in working in the UK with this very um, service. Who's that again? Who's that Katie again? Richards at Chantry. Oh, nice, nice. So she is very familiar with the UK model. Um, having practiced and live in the UK. And as a matrimonial lawyer, she says, you know, it's so less contentious when we have a different voice in the room. Yes, yes. And then finally, at Melo Diaz and Martin, Miss Honor, Desmond Tetlow. So those are the three lawyers who have so graciously supported me in this wow. initiative. Wow. Um, when I reached out to Miss Tetlow, well, she tells me call her Honor. When I reached out to Honor, she said to me, you know, Tiffany, I was involved when that legislation was drafted in 1998. She said, I'm disappointed that it took so long, but I'm happy that we're finally here. And so for her, it's almost come full circle. Wow. And so there are people in our community who, you know, the, the common saying, unsung heroes. There are people in our community who are doing a lot of things for our children. And we really do need to just jump on board and make sure that we're doing it, you know, with, with a good heart. It's not a money-making scheme. You can never say I got into this for the money because I have not been paid in four years. I'm sorry, I have to ask. I need to get paid. Don't yeah. don't think yes. that I'm laughing and I think it's funny. I absolutely need to get paid. No, that, that wasn't going to be my point. My, I my encourage question. you to get on Rogazette. They yes. have my ladder up. It was in yesterday's newspaper. So my timeline, two people. It's but very no, my clear. question really <laughs> is for that particular lawyer who helped no, in. Mr. Dismond. That person said Mr. Salters. <laughs> oh, Mr. Okay. Um, the person who helped draft that yes, legislation. Ms. Tetley. Mr. I just have to ask the question then. Why was this part missed out? I can't say. I know, because but I just have to ask that. Like, why was that missed out? And she was involved in the perspective of giving feedback on, like, these are some things that we may want to consider. Mm -hmm. um, the legislature passes the legislation. No, I know, so but it just, but it just seems like the compensation part would be a very critical part, and that was missed out. The council part was also missed out. It's well, just... no, the legislation does speak to a council. I'm glad you raised that. Thank you. Okay. The legislation says that the court shall appoint a litigation guardian. In legal interpretation, shall means it must absolutely happen. It's not negotiable. Right. The, lower down. Saying, okay. Lower down. Okay. There is another clause that says the minister may appoint a panel or may so embody a panel. Okay. So may is discretionary. Mm -hmm. And so based on that and based on the need for continuity and based on the conversations that I had been having with, um, you know, the people who I had already explained. Right. The, the um, feedback was submit a proposal. Okay. So that we can formalize this. It can be like a one-stop shop for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. We know that the litigation guardians that work for you have been trained properly. Mm -hmm. And then we as minister would have the oversight. So obviously I'll be accountable to the minister because they'll be giving me a budget and anybody who gets money from government should be accountable. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, so. I hope so. so that was um, the next question. I'll just, I'll give you guys 10 more minutes. Do you work with the human rights commission as well? Yes, we've had a case with the Human Rights Commission on behalf of a young person. The Human Rights Commission did join us because it was a human rights issue. Okay. Yeah. okay. So b basically, and I, I don't want to speak for the Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. but basically um, for the, from the human rights perspective, when we do not afford children this, it's a breach of the human right. I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So do you work with any other, other charities? as well in your capacity um, i do work with some of the other charities in my capacity there is a body in bermuda called the interagency charity um for children and families oh okay. and so that includes anybody in bermuda who provides um services to children and families so you have the family center you have scars you have therapeutic consulting services you have coalition for the protection of children right you have um child development uh family services court services all of these people are in the room and we talk about different things that are impacting our community. Okay. But okay. none of those people can be, they all provide services to their population. Would you mind speaking to um, just screen and, and saying to people, mm -hmm. if you're dealing with a case mm -hmm. and they're not sure, mm -hmm. can they say, does this qualify for litigation guardian to be involved? So what I'll say is if you are currently involved with the court mm -hmm. and you are in the court for something to do with your child, I'll say if your child is on a care order or if your child is on a, a supervision order, mm -hmm. absolutely 100%, you say, I would like for my child to have a litigation guardian. Okay. You let the court know and it has to be on the record. 
Wow. If you go to court and you get a response that you don't think is favorable, call me. I will take your call and I'll give you some instructions on what you can potentially do for next steps. Okay. If your child, if you are currently in the courts for something to do with your child, not criminal, yes. not, it doesn't cover like juvenile offenders yet. Um, because really and truly, any child that comes into contact with the court really should have some level of intervention because at that point, we want to try to prevent the progression. Mm-hmm. Not keep them on the Ferris view of exactly. offending, right? Exactly. But that's a whole other topic for another day. No. So <laughs> if you're in court for anything to do with uh, a matter and, you know, decisions directly impact the child, mm-hmm. ask the court. Okay. So you have it, parents. Ask. Ask. You know, for those who came in privately who are going through divorces, ask the question. Yeah. Is this something that will qualify for a litigation guard? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, guys? <laughs> to part, part three. three. <laughs> I think so. I think so. This would definitely have to be after cop match. Yes. And, or, or if something happens between now and, you know. Something significant. Yep. Yeah. What yeah, I will say is um, those of you who may be have children on a supervision order or a care order. Yes. And if you do, you know what that means. Um, it's not negotiable for you. Your child is entitled to that. Is. Is. Yes. Absolutely. Say that one more time. If you have a child who is currently on a supervision order or a care order, your child is entitled to that. It's not negotiable. The legislation makes it very clear. And if the court decides, and it's in the legislation, if the court decides that they do not want to uh, appoint a, a litigation guardian at that time, the court has to give you reasons why. Wow. And Justice Hellman's ruling reinforced that. Yes. That's yes. why I say we need to be informed. Right. Because if we only read what's available to us, we will never know everything. But he was saying, even though with funding, yeah. without funding. And he was saying the lack of funding only serves to frustrate the system. Yeah. Because the legislation is clear on its intent. Right. Wow. wow. And there aren't many Tiffany's saying, hi, I'll do it for free. I have a clinician on my staff, a master's level social worker. She has been working for me for the last year and she does not get paid. And she was happy to come on board. I told her for up front, look, I can't, I can't pay you. No. I ain't got no money to pay you. So don't come around her thinking you're going to get a paycheck. For the and she, guardian. And so she, okay. she works as a clinician. So she does see a few of our clients, mm. but I've also had her shadowing me in court to be a litigation guardian Okay. so that um, when this gets sorted out, because I do believe it's when, not if. I believe so. Our, children, I believe are, so our, our children are worthy of a win. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And so, you know, we're doing what we can to get the word out there. This is, this is exciting stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Tiffany, did you get your number? Sorry, the number at Therapeutic Consulting Services is 400-5141, and I am extension one, and I look forward to working with whoever thinks that this is a service that they can benefit from and that their children absolutely need. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, guys, so I guess the the consensus is we have to have part three, (laughs) and I think we'll all be watching the news and to find out, okay, what happens with this particular situation what was going to happen mm-hmm. is it going to be a council you know form what is the government going to do is miss thomas finally gonna get paid you know all that good stuff okay guys now about kicks what's yes. happening okay hold on hold on if i go to that do you only deal with local cases if there are Bermudian children living in other countries do you assist if they're on a uh, court order yes so i've had clients who have been in other jurisdictions, but they're on a court order. Okay. But a, Bermuda court order. A Bermuda court order. Because right. I'm only authorized That's to like act say yeah, by being a court order. So it has to be, you know, a jurisdictional issue. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So we're wrapping up. It is 10 past the hour. We're going over a little bit. What's happening with kicks? So I just had my university freshman workshop. I just finished up this week. It was great. The students said they learned a lot. It was no waste of time. They told me that was kind of cute. That's a positive. <laughs> that was positive. 18, 19 years. They tell you like it is. So my next one is coming up in August. I have my parent info session on the 8th. Right after that, the following week will be the sessions. They are 340. The conference is coming up. Woo! Oh, my I gracious. was not prompted to do that. <laughs> 
is so kind. <laughs> okay, guys, so that's coming up Saturday, September 1. It's going to be at Buey. Doors open at 9 o'clock. And then the first panel discussion kicks off at Ooh. 10 o'clock. I hope you guys have seen the panel lineup. I am excited. Oh, thanks, too. It looks amazing. I've got three more to add once they all get there. Yeah, I'm just waiting for bios and photos. <laughs> Fires and photos. It's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. So my topics are raising a boss, decoding Gen Z again for those who have children that were born after 1998. <laughs> There's a distinction, right? Okay, co-parenting for your child's success. Uh, oh my goodness, the other one is boys to men, mm -hmm. code for AKA mama's boys. Yeah. And then daddy's girl. So right now I have 25 guest panelists. Some are my clients, some are not. I have two clinical psychologists, awesome. one psychiatrist, the senior executive, stay-at-home moms. I have the gamut. I am so excited, so blessed, so humbled by all of this, just to have them on board. So you guys, you missed the special. So now the regular <laughs> ticket price is $55. Patron tickets are $85. That includes, regardless whichever you get, that includes continental breakfast. You also have a light lunch afternoon refreshments and there's snacks in between and there are also door prizes in addition i will also have an exhibit booth of kicks resources basically those individuals who have organizations that are youth focused and helping to develop leaders so they'll be on board in the lobby area to talk about their services and how they can help you because the theme is developing the whole child i love it yes love so you can it. go on my website kicksystems.com you can buy tickets exclusively on my website. Just register right there and then. You will get on the day of, we will have also a list of who's registered so you get your conference pass. There will be no ticket sales at the door. I believe your tickets are going to be sold out before that point anyway. I know. So I know. don't come to the door because you'll be disappointed. <laughs> you, really? Because people like Angela, I'm, I'm coming. Just got to, I'm like, okay, fine, fine. I know after cop match, it's going to be on and, and popping. Well, you, know, you know how, how, the how we are. Used to say, Stop coming and come. Just get your ticket to avoid disappointment. Yeah, it's 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 going to be. I mean, it's, it's so I'm so excited, but everybody's just like, I can't wait. I think what the, I think why people are so excited because they are going to be parents yes. sharing their yes. personal experiences with everybody, and we all can get a chance to ask questions and comment. And that's what it's all about for me. It's just basically sharing, laughing, inspiring, encouraging. Like you are not alone. <laughs> It sounds like it's going to be empowering. Yeah. We're all, we're all trying it. to do this thing right. I love it. Raise, you know, healthy children. And I really want to encourage those young parents. You have the young ones coming yeah. up. I can't remember what they call your demographic, but they're another name too. <laughs> <laughs> After the Gen Z. Just so that you can learn from the mistakes that we have made ourselves and, and, and you know, empower you you do things differently think differently mm -hmm. you know how we talk to our children some of that stuff has come from model behavior i can admit to that myself what we see all the parents do or just those in our families like you know it's, it's quite common to cuss and carry on and just go crazy no we can't do that we can't do that <laughs> It's not, it doesn't yield success. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Right. And then also I have my refresher workshop for those who've been through my note taking starting strategies uh, workshops. This refresher with my students who are going back. A little brush up. That's two hours. That is September 8th. And then my regular most popular workshop on note taking starting strategies starts on September 22nd. Okay. So all this stuff's on my website. Check it out. I've got a YouTube channel. I am Facebook, I'm Twitter, I'm Insta, as the kids, I'm Insta. <laughs> so you can keep up with the ones that's born after Jan. What is I'm it trying, doing? I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> you can teach me a thing or two. <laughs> oh my gosh. So guys, again, thank you so much. Yes, very informative. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. <laughs> Part three, it's coming. Looking for, oh, thanks, awesome, Julie. Julie. Thank you. Are you going to be live in Georgia? I'm sorry. Something's coming. I don't want to announce it yet, but something's coming. Just oh. know Angela is definitely a gadget girl. I, I'm definitely one for technology. I like to be tech savvy and keep up. So, <laughs> but get your ticket. I'll just leave it at that. Get your ticket. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will have a part three. I will <laughs> have Miss Tom. This is now we have some exciting updates for the part three. But that's right? what I'm saying. This is definitely turning out to be a series. <laughs> Your audience is amazing. They are. They are. They They're are. Amazing. They are. They're amazing. They are.
Thank you guys again. Facebook, you have I have my Kicks Systems page, my Kicks Parents page this is my private page, and then I have the Kicks Live Conference page. I have my shirt to share. Oh, you, you gotta see. come this way. Oh, good. I'm so silly. My shirt. But anyway, you couldn't see it. <laughs> it's amazing. Take my word for That's it. It's amazing, amazing, guys. I'm, I'm biased. Pink's my favorite color. <laughs> I shall for pink too. Okay, guys. Good night. We have it's one day awesome. over. Tiff, again, your number one more time. Again, Therapeutic Consulting Services. We are located at 53 King Street, right next door to the fire station. And our number is 400-5141. And my extension is extension one. Okay, guys. Good night. I Good give night. you an additional 15 minutes. We are out. Deuces. Loved you guys. <laughs> it was amazing. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. And be safe over the cop match holiday. Bye. Bye.